everyone, welcome back to Dark Cross Stitch, this is Nadia. Um, this week you might see that I have not done a floss tube and that is just because simply I didn't get enough stitching done to warrant doing a floss tube. So instead of doing that I thought I would do <clears throat> a stitch with me. Now this is the second stitch with me that I've done for Tomb Raider and I am considering changing it up a little bit until we get away from the darker colours just because I've only just started this cross stitch um, and there's not really much to show you so I think next time I might come away from the darker colours and just well I might actually do a bit off camera is what I mean and then come back to it I'm not sure yet um, because I did say that I would only do this one on the stitch with me so I'm not quite sure what other Cross stitches I would do on the stitch with me yet. I haven't really. I, obviously, you can tell that I haven't really thought about this. <laughs> um, I was just thinking when I was stitching this that there's an awful lot of black and green, and there is a few color changes in this, but you can't really tell on the camera. So it might be. I just feel like it's going to be a little bit boring to watch. So, um, what have I been doing this week other than obviously not cross stitching because I didn't get much time to do it my kids had the half term and that is the reason why I think I didn't get enough time I was just too busy um there was three days where I didn't do any cross stitch at all so I just felt like well that you know there's not much point in showing a doing a floss tube when I've got not much to show so I will keep the um stitch count that I've done this week and I'll like transfer it over to next week when I do a floss tube next week. So um, other than that, I have been organising the house. I've had a bit of a spring clean in the house. So I know it's not March yet and I know it's not spring, but there was a sunny day. I can't remember what day it was. I think it might have been Thursday. Thursday was really nice and sunny and I was just like, do you know what? I really feel like having a clear out. So I organised my bedroom, then I came down and organised the craft room. Now, the craft room is always messy because I'm always pulling things out. I'm always like creating something in here and it, and it does make a mess. Um, and when I was cleaning out this time, I got rid of a lot of old stuff that I used to make things with. I finally had a, a good old clear through of what I do use and what I don't use then I realized that I would need some storage so I went on a storage hunt and I ordered um some like trolley storage from Hobbycraft that turned up yesterday and it's absolutely wonderful I love it so I ended up ordering another five <laughs> I got a bit carried away with the storage and ordered another five um, because what I want to do is have some under desk storage so it's not all on the sides and these these little storage trolleys actually fit perfectly under this corner desk where I usually record my floss tubes um, and it's it's wonderful it, it is so nice because at the minute um, I don't know if you know this but I run an Etsy shop and at the minute all of my stock is in boxes um, and it takes up a lot of space in the room because all of that stuff is in this room as well. You don't ever see it on camera because it's on the same side as where obviously the camera is. But it takes up a lot of room and it's very, very messy. It doesn't it doesn't look pretty <laughs> to me. So having these under desk storage system solution, whatever you want to call it, I can put the things that are waiting to be sold in these drawers. And it's 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 very satisfying. You know when, well, you might not be like this, but you know when you find a storage solution to something that's bugging you and it just, everything just fits. It's very satisfying to have everything fit perfectly. Yeah, I think I would say I am a big, big, big sucker for organisation. I love to organise things. Um... I love to put things in alphabetical order, in colour order, in like, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like different themes, different, do, do you know what I mean? Like I love to organise just in general anything. 
Um, and I don't always have a very organised area, which is really strange because obviously somebody that loves to organise, you'd think everything would be like aesthetically pleasing, but I can be a bit chaotic at the same time. <laughs> so sometimes everything looks nice and then another time everything is just a mess. But it was really, really nice to have a good clear out, um, especially in my bedroom, because I seem to have been hoarding things that I don't need anymore. So what else did I get up to? Well, um, as you probably noticed on the screen, I have a plaster on my finger. I do apologise for that. I keep trying to hide it underneath the um, cro the cross stitch. Um, I had a bit of an accident this week while I was making some clay. Now, with my clay, I have a very, very sharp blade when it comes to sculpting things and cutting the clay. And it's, think of it as like a long Stanley blade. So it's it's got like, it's just a blade, like I'm basically just holding a blade. So I accidentally picked it up the wrong way around. And when I went to cut the clay, I pushed my finger into the blade. Yes, that is the probably the fifth time I've done that. Um, and it was very, very deep. Um, and because it was such a sharp blade, it took me a couple of seconds to realise that I had just put my thing, finger through the blade, if, if that makes sense, because it was um, so sharp. It's one of them injuries where you don't feel it straight away. Um, so yes, it, it was um, very, very painful afterwards. It wasn't painful when I'd done it, but it was painful afterwards. And I was like, oh, you idiot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am sorry about the, the plaster on the finger. I have since marked that Stanley blade thing I, I don't really know what they're called um i don't know if you've ever seen people um where they've been making anything to do with polymer clay but they usually have a long old blade where they cut the clay um, and i have no idea what the what the name of this blade is called but i have since marked the blunt side so i now know to pay attention to that and pick it up from the marked side because you cannot tell if you're not paying attention which is the sharp side and which is the blunt side well I can't anyway and I'm pretty accident prone so I thought I better not do this again <laughs> and I have since marked it um another thing that I did this week is actually find um some information out about my phone which I never knew before which I should know because of the things that I do so my friend is looking for a new phone and I was obviously talking to her about my phone. So I have the Samsung S23 and I was telling her like, you know, it's a really, really good phone. Um, and I think it was it was in her price range. So she was looking at it and then she asked me about the camera. And I said, well, I don't really know about the camera I'm because I'm really bad at taking photos. I don't take very good photos. So I had a look on Google. <laughs> Even though I've got the phone, I looked on Google on the phone and um, it said all this stuff about taking photos that I didn't realise it could do. So I was going through my settings um, for a good half an hour that night, realising that my phone did more than what I knew it did. Um, and I always find it really interesting when I find out new things. Um, with, with objects that I already have um, and I never knew any of this stuff so I finally sort of figured out how to use my phone um, so when it comes to taking images for my shop and things like that I should be a bit better about for it because I am really bad at taking photos um, and because of the shop that I run I should be pretty good at taking photos because Etsy is more like if you don't have a good photo on there you're less likely someone's less likely to click on it you have to have a good photo there and that is where I fail so um yeah <laughs> that's also another thing that I found out um what else oh valentine's day so we've had valentine's day and me and my partner don't really celebrate valentine's day I think he definitely would if I 
was in was into the whole Valentine's Day thing, but I'm not really into it. Like I always say to him, I don't see the point in wasting money for just that specific day when we can show each other we love each other all the time. Um, and we do buy things for each other all the time. It's just like a little, especially him. He will go out and he'll say if he's in town or something and he sees something that I like, he will pick it up for me and say, oh, I saw this, I thought of you, here's a present. Um, he doesn't need a day to tell me or to get me something. And it actually really annoys me Valentine's Day a lot of the time because of how commercialised it is. So I always say to him, look, don't bother about Valentine's Day. What we usually do is just get something to eat. We just have a nice takeaway and we'll find a movie to watch and just spend time together. That's that's all I really want. I just want to spend time with him. I don't want any presents. But he had a work do to go to. So he had a like a get together with his co-workers in Norwich. Um, and we went there on the 10th of February. So I said to him, um, we might as well just treat this as our Valentine's Day thing this year. So we stayed in a hotel because um, Norwich is about an hour's drive from where we are. Um, and we stayed in the hotel. We went out and saw his friends at the pub. We had something to eat. Um, and it was a really, really nice, really nice evening. Now, I would say I did get a little bit bored of the conversation <laughs> because um, most of the people that were there worked with my partner or have worked with my partner so they're in a different store now and it was a lot of conversation about work so I felt a little bit I wouldn't say out of place because no one made me feel out of place but um, there was a lot of things that they were saying that I just didn't understand and <laughs> <laughs> and they were talking about um so I'd, it, I don't know if any of you work in retail but my partner is a deputy store manager of Marks and Spencers and they have like weird codes for a lot of things that they talk about and um I can't, I'm trying to think of some that they said but I've completely forgotten them but I just listened to them and I'm like what are they talking about <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it was nice for, for my partner to get out and and socialize because he literally works all the time he works a good 60 hours a week most weeks so it was nice for him to just go out and just me for me to be there because he wanted he basically wanted to show me off if that makes sense like he wanted his men his friends to meet me um because a lot of them hadn't met me before so I was basically just there for him and he seemed like he was having a really good night. He seemed to really enjoy himself. I think he wanted to go out, you know, like out to the nightclubs afterwards. But by the time 12 o'clock come around, we were all knackered. Like I was done. I, <laughs> I was ready to go back to the hotel, um, get in bed, find something on the TV. You know, like I was I was done. I'm, I'm not really... Uh, what's the word? I'm not really into the whole clubbing thing as much as I used to be anymore. And I think it's because I know that the next morning I'm going to be absolutely shattered. Because I do love a good dance. When I go... So when I used to go out to nightclubs, um, I was always the person on the dance floor. You would never see me, or you'd rarely see me, sitting down and chatting in a nightclub. Because one, it's too blooming loud. And two, I'm always on the dance floor. Like, I could literally dance on that dance floor from the, the minute that club opens to the minute it shuts. But I regret it the next day. I do now, anyway. But when I was younger, I could be dancing till 3am when they kick me out, you know. And then we'd all go home and I wouldn't be in bed till 5 o'clock in the morning. And then I'd get up with the kids at 6, 7 o'clock. <laughs> um, but now, gosh... Now I don't think I could do that. And I'm not old. I'm only 33. But it just takes it out of me now. Um, and I think it's because I don't do it anymore. So when I do go out, it's like a, a big shock to the system type thing. And I get so hungover now. Um, 
as I said when I was younger I could just drink and dance and have fun and you know wake up an hour later full of energy ready for the day with the kids but now oh my gosh I I cannot drink to the point where I get drunk anymore because I just don't like the hangover afterwards I feel so awful the next day that it's put me off from getting drunk so I tend to when I drink now I tend to just get merry enough where I know okay that's that's it I'm done for the night because I know if I go any further the next day when I wake up I'm gonna feel awful um and my favorite drink is rum so I I love to drink rum or whiskey um and I actually had what did I have I'm the last time we went away, so not Valentine's Day, but the last time we went away, I believe, was just before Christmas. And we went away to Norwich again, actually, um, just for a night away together. This hotel had the most delicious cocktails I have ever had in my life. Now, as I said, I used, I used to be a real rum person. Um, and before that, when I was really, really young, it was the Alka Pops. Um, if you're in the UK, I, I don't I don't know if you'll know what these are um, overseas, but we call them Alco Pops, where it's it doesn't taste like alcohol, um, and it's like four percent. Um, I'm thinking of like the WKD blue bottles, um, that type of stuff was what I used to drink when I first started going out, and vodka. I used to drink a lot of vodka. Now I don't. I do not touch vodka at all. I hate it. I cannot stand. <laughs> I cannot stand vodka anymore. I cannot stand vodka. Um, I think it's just I've been scarred for life by hangovers in the past. <laughs> so I went on to whiskey and I went on to rum, and I seem to do much better on them when it comes to things like hangovers. Um, but anyway, this hotel had this cocktail because cocktails seem to be the new thing as I've got older I've started drinking cocktails whereas when I was younger I never touched cocktails they had this one with rum orange juice and I think it was prosecco sugar syrup um and I think that was it but it was like pure orange juice oh my god it was beautiful um, and I have actually made it at home. I remade it because I loved it that much that I remade it for Christmas Day because we don't drink at home unless it's Christmas Day. So Christmas Day, I, I remade this this um, cocktail with... Um, have you ever seen Dead Man Fingers Mango Rum? I used that and I used or pure, pure orange juice, sugar syrup, ice and Prosecco. And this cocktail is absolutely beautiful. Um, but when I went away in <laughs> before last year, I think it was November, when, when I went away and I had these cocktails at the hotel, because they were so nice, I kept drinking them. And oh my gosh, the next day, I thought I was dying. <laughs> I had the biggest hangover it was awful but it was it was a it was a lovely drink <laughs> um but yeah so all this to say i don't really drink that much so this this night away for me and my partner was more for him i wanted him to have a good time and he definitely got drunk he he was drinking quite a bit um but i do think he really did want to go to a nightclub and have a bit of a boogie but unfortunately, everybody else was not into it. So, but he he did say he had a good time. Um, so that was that was our Valentine's Day. That's what we done. And I think on the actual Valentine's Day, we were gonna have um, a takeaway. But when he turned up, he had dinner with me and the kids, and then we didn't didn't wanna. We had like a small. Oh, that was it. I remember now. We actually went to play badminton. So Valentine's Day, like the 14th, um, he had booked badminton. So I made everybody a really, really light dinner because badminton was at 6pm. So at four o'clock, I made everybody a light meal because I thought, well, we're not going to want to have a heavy meal and then go and play badminton. <clears throat> and he wanted to have a takeaway that night and watch a movie. 
So I made a light meal and we went to play badminton. It was really, really good fun. Really good fun. My youngest son hated it, but my middle son really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I really enjoyed it and so does my par did my partner, but we were absolutely knackered afterwards and we only did an hour's worth <laughs> because we haven't done it in so long. We were knackered and my wrist really hurt because what we did is my partner was by himself on one team and me and my son were on another team. So we well, he was he was basically playing singles and we were playing double. <laughs> um, and my partner is a lot faster than me and my younger son. So that's why I thought, well, I'll sit, I'll do it with my son and help him. Um, so what I did was I was at the I was further back than my son. So if it went over him, I would then run and get it. But my partner thought it would be extremely funny to do it so I was running backwards and like side to side on this badminton court so he'd hit it one way I'd run to it and hit it back and then he'd hit it the other side so I'd have to leg it <laughs> all the way to the other side and smack it back and then every now and again he was hitting it to Kane my um my son so by this by the time this hour was out and I gave it back to him don't you worry I was making sure that I made him run <laughs> um and we all had a really good time but he was absolutely cream crackered by the time by the time we'd finished my partner he was done he was like i am absolutely done um which was quite funny to see because he's the he's the sporty one in the house um he's played football for years and we're not very active people um he's he is the most active out of all of us and the rest of us aren't that active um, so it was funny to see him absolutely knackered. But when we got home, we just didn't feel like eating. We ended up sitting in the living room. Um, I can't remember what we were doing. We went in there for something. We just sat down. And then we were going to, you know, have our normal routine of go upstairs, have a bath, get in bed, and then order something for just me and him to watch a movie with. None of that happened because we sat in the living room and then he started talking about his job. Um, he's not very happy in where he works at the minute, so I think he's gonna perhaps maybe look for another one. We're not sure yet, but he wasn't very happy about certain things, so we were just chatting about that. And I don't know if any of you do this, but one thing led to another, and we were just there for, I think it was like two and a half hours, three hours we were sitting there talking. Um, and it was only supposed to be like a 10 minute conversation. <laughs> so we ended up not eating any takeaway that night and we had a couple of snacks. Um, and we, we just went upstairs and finally found a film. Um, we watched the movie Iron Claw, which is what he picked, I let him pick. And it's to do with some wrestlers. <clears throat> um, I didn't like the film, it actually really annoyed me. Um, well, I say I didn't like the movie, but I didn't like the father in the movie. It actually, he actually really, really made me mad. Because <laughs> um, this Iron Claw is based on a true story. And <clears throat> the father really wound me up of how he forced his... He didn't force, but he, well, he practically forced his children to wrestle. And that was really, really, like, winding me up. So... Yeah, that was our Valentine's Day. I've also been thinking about my birthday cross-stitch start. So I would like to do... Um, I will put the picture on the screen um, of the one I want to do because I've forgotten what it's called. I would like to say it's called I See You In My Dreams, but I'm not sure if it's called that. I don't know why that, that is sticking in my head. Um, but it is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, so this cross stitch has 160 colours I believe, um, so I was contemplating not doing that one for my birthday but I do love it so much that I have decided that I will do it um, and I want to do it on 25 count fabric so I'm gonna need to find 25 fab oh my goodness 25 count fabric 
that's big enough for this chart because sometimes when they go over a certain size I have a bit of an issue of finding um, the right size in 25 count and I think I've ordered I want to say I've ordered about 40 of the flosses so far so what basically what I'm trying to do with this chart is order a couple a good amount of flosses every month so when it comes to May um, which is when my birthday is I don't have to order the 160 colors all at once <clears throat> that's what I want to do and I think at the minute I've got about 40 so I'm hoping in March I can order another 40 that will give me 80 and then or I might just take it straight up to 100 and order 60 just to get the flosses prepared <clears throat> because then after I've got all the flosses I want to find the fabric I then need to decide what I want to do for my next start this year. So I've only given myself two starts this year, other than the soda stitch that I did for um, my daughter's baby that she's expecting. Well, I've started it. I haven't done it. Um, I've actually finished one of the kittens on that now. And it's looking so, so cute. It really is it's looking absolutely lovely. Um, I'm really, really enjoying that stitch. Um, but... I because I've got I'm trying to think how many whips I've got I think I might have about 14 it's either 14 or 16 current whips on the go and a lot of them are full coverage you know the big big cross stitches especially ones like the Lord of the Rings um, and this one the Tomb Raider this one is 750 um, stitches long so they're they're pretty big projects I don't know what I want to do for Christmas. Um, I don't know if I want to do another full coverage big cross stitch pattern because I've already picked one for my birthday start or whether I want to do something small. Now I was talking to my partner about Mother's Day as well. He asked me what I want and for the first time I actually asked for a cross stitch pattern it wasn't a pattern sorry it was a kit so for the because I never really are well I always hint that I want cross stitch stuff or diamond painted stuff for for Christmas birthdays Mother's Day you know but because he doesn't do any of it he has no idea what he's looking at so he tends to not get things um and he just sticks to things that he knows even if I've sent him links he's like I don't know what I'm looking at so either I give you the money and you buy it or I go get something else but I don't always like just having the money. I, I, sometimes it'd be nice just to open something that I don't know what I'm getting, if that makes sense. Um, so he has bought me a diamond painter before. And it was from Diamond Paint in Deutschland, which is a German company that sells Josephine Wall licensed diamond paintings. And these diamond paintings have like 240 colours um, they're very extravagant and I just wanted the one to try it out because I wanted to see what it would be like to work on a diamond painting with that many colours. Um, I have finished it. It is on the wall. It was a big, big challenge um, and I did really enjoy it, but I don't think I'd do it again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just clear my throat a bit. I don't think it would be something that I would make a habit of doing. Um, one with that many colours just because the amount of storage pots and everything that you need is a bit crazy so for Mother's Day I said to him well there's actually some diamond painting kits on a company called Thread Geeks that I really really want and they're not that expensive so I don't like him spending a lot of money on me um, and is it Oh, I can never pronounce her name properly, but she's my favourite artist. I call her Charissa Bug, but I think she's called Trissa Bug. I'm sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, anyway, she is now on Thread Geeks, and they have some budget-friendly kits on Thread Geeks, and one of them is a pattern of hers. It was £35, I believe, and I said to him, OK, well, there is something that I actually know that I want this year, um, in cross stitch form I'll send you the link and because at first he was like well why don't you just buy it and I send you the money and I was like well no because I want you to keep it until Mother's Day so I've got something to open because if I buy it he's just going to give it to me now and then and and that's it 
So I said, well, no, you buy it and you can just give it to me on Mother's Day because I'm not going to start it yet anyway. So I'm thinking of starting that for Christmas. But then I also remembered that I have, I will have my floss tube anniversary this year because obviously it'll be my first year of floss tube in September. So I'm kind of thinking, do I want to do another start? on my one year anniversary because I'm not intending on not continuing YouTube you know I want to stay on here I'm really really enjoying myself um so I think I do kind of want to do a start for the year anniversary on here now I know I've got a long long time I know it's only February and my anniversary's in September that was when I first recorded my first floss tube um so it wasn't that long ago <laughs> It feels like a long time ago because I know that I've I have changed um, already. Just recording, um, how many am I on? I think I'm on like number twenty one floss tube. Like I have been getting better and better and more confident. That's that's the word I'm looking for. The confidence. So when I first recorded my first ever floss tube back in September, I was a nervous wreck i i watched that video a few days ago and it is awful like to me it's awful like um the lighting's wrong the camera angle's wrong my hair's a mess and i was like what on earth and i was talking about random things and i had like no when i st when i recorded that video i had no plan of what i was doing and i think that was where i went wrong and obviously i was nervous um but now I've done 20 floss tubes. I feel like each one gets better and better. Well, I hope I hope it comes across that way as well. I'm always looking to improve them um, and improve myself, really, because this is really enjoyable for me doing the videos. Um, I really, really enjoy it. So I want them to be as good as I possibly can. Um, yeah, yeah, I I really, really do enjoy doing this. It's It's been lovely. It's been lovely meeting lots of new people as well. I've met a couple of lovely floss tubers. Um, and it's just, it's been lovely. I, I don't really know how else to say it. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is start the Trissa Bug for my anniversary because she is my favourite artist and I will already have the kit ready and waiting for me. So that will be, I'd imagine that will be where I go with it. And then come Christmas, I kind of want to do the Chris Dunn. I think I'll have to just pop a image up on the screen of the one that I'm talking about, but I do have a cross-stitch chart from Chris Dunn. It's the two... Um, field mouse I think they are um, the lady is knitting and the man is reading a newspaper I'm sure they are <laughs> uh, but it is a beautiful image and I love Chris Dunn's artwork but there is a lot of brown in that picture now I for some reason really really hate stitching brown um, and I have figured that out with the astrology cat heaven and earth design stitch along I started to get really, really bored with brown in the corner that I was working in. So I am sort of contemplating whether to start that crystal or not, but I do love that image so much that I think it will be worth it. Um, but the entire picture is basically covered in brown, so it won't be something that I get done quickly. Although saying that, none of my cross stitches get done quickly because I have too many and they're all full coverage. <laughs> Um, yeah, I also have my um, Disney magazine that turned up. I don't know if you saw my last floss tube, but I spoke about a bit of haul. Um, I will show it in my next floss tube. But it's for my daughter's baby. Um, she, My daughter is really into Disney stuff for her baby that she's expecting. So I went and purchased a Disney subscription magazine. But I, I didn't get it on a subscription. I just bought the one issue. Um, I really liked a Dumbo chart that I saw there. 
So I'm going to, I will probably keep that though until I have finished the soda stitch one that I'm currently working on for the baby because I don't want to do two at once because one, I'd rather get one done and spend more time on just the one and then go back and do the next one instead of splitting my time between the two charts and then taking longer. So um, the Dumbo one actually isn't that big and it won't take long to do it once I start it. But I do really want to get that soda stitch one done first. And it is, as I said before, it's a lovely stitch and it will go quite quickly, I feel. So I don't think it's going to take me as long as I thought to do that soda stitch. Um, I don't really know what else I would do for my Christmas start if I don't do the Chris Dunn one. There's a lot of Margaret Morales ones that I really, really love. Um, from Heaven and Earth Designs. There's a dragon that I recently bought. I think I showed it in the last floss tube. It's like a circle. It does, it's, what am I saying? So I could frame it in a hoop is what I'm saying instead of getting an actual proper frame for it because it's in a circle. Um, I have so many charts that I would love to start, but I also need to think about if I start them all at once, nothing is going to get done. Um, I would like to have one finish by the end of the year. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think I am aiming for mostly Venom and Soda Stitch. <clears throat> now I think the Soda Stitch will be easy to finish by the end of the year. I'm not too sure about my Venom picture. That is a gift for my daughter. Her favourite character is Venom. Um, she absolutely loves him. She thinks he's he's really, really cool. So I started that picture for her. And it's definitely her art style. If you've seen her artwork before. Um, when I filmed my frost tubes, that big diamond painting behind me, the white and black one, that's her artwork that I got made into a diamond painting. Um, so it, Venom is very much her style of art. So I would like to finish that this year. Now I would, if, I, if I'm being ambitious, I would love to finish Daft Daddy this year as well and just get that off my rotation, but I highly, highly doubt that I'm going to finish three. Um, Venom is at, I want to say Venom's at 50, not Venom, sorry, Daft Daddy is at 53%. So if I worked on it an awful lot, I could definitely get it done, but I don't think I'm going to have the time. Uh, this week I've been working on Poinsettia Pixie. That's been really, really fun because I haven't worked on that for a few weeks. <coughs> and obviously I've been working on Venom. I've worked on... <clears throat> sorry, my throat. Worked on Venom, worked on Soda Stitch, worked on Lord of the Rings, of course. Um, I honestly don't think that that Lord of the Rings is going to be done by the time I'm 40, which was my goal. So I have six years and know, about three months um so that oh, i can't see that get being getting done by, before my 40 if i honestly can't um when i first started that i was like yeah i'll get that done in seven years no problem at all but the thing's 999 stitches wide so and i've got too many other things that i want to stitch on but we will see i think i said in my last floss tube that we will get to like the last year or two um when i hit 38 39 i'll see i'll see how much progress i've got to do left and then i'll decide whether i want to make that like a full focus like a fully focused piece just so i can get it done before i'm 40 but at the minute i'm not really worrying about it i'm kind of just just um, doing my 200 a day um and then next year Next year I have a few ideas that I want to start, but I'm not 100% sure on them just yet. So I'm not going to make any, you know, like big plans for 2025 just yet. But I do have a list of things that I would really like to start. Um, how many of them that I start will probably depend on how well my progress goes this year. So I don't really mind having a lot of whips but at the same time I don't want things sitting there for a long long time 
I mean, everyone's stitching journey is different. A lot, some people only like to stitch one thing. Some people like to stitch hundreds. Some people like to stitch really, really large projects. Some people like to do samplers. Some people like to do a mix of all of that. Now, most of mine obviously are full coverage and I know that they're gonna take years to do. So I'm kind of in that aspect or in that mindset of like, do I really wanna do these many full coverage projects that are gonna take years and years and years to do? <clears throat> um, which is why I think I kind of switched it up a bit and did the Long Dog Sampler and um, Dark Queen of the Seas. They're not full coverage. So when I get sick and tired of full coverage, I can move on to them for a little while. But next year, I have already, there's already one on my list that I know I want to do because it's a very, very small image. Um, it's not full coverage. It's just a small little cross stitch pattern from Etsy of a cap that says, I hate everyone equally. <laughs> and my son saw that at Christmas time. So my son was actually sitting next to me around Christmas time when I was scrolling through cross stitch patterns um, on Etsy and he saw this cat. I think it's got a rainbow. It's a cat with a rainbow behind it. I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen. I'll find it in my chart somewhere. <laughs> it just says, I hate everyone equally. And the way he said it when he read it was hilarious. So I ended up buying it. I think it was like three pound or something silly. And it doesn't have many colours. So that is something that I want to start next year as just like a little funny cross stitch pattern that I will probably put in his room when it's done. Um, so I know I'm going to be starting that one. I do want to do one of Margaret Morales's ones as well. I have After the Rain, I think it's called. I'll find a picture of that as well for you. Um, I love her artwork. Her art is absolutely wonderful. So I really do want to get one of hers started. So I can imagine I'll probably do that next year. And then other than that, I have no idea. I don't know if it's going to be another year like this year where I only do a Christmas one and a birthday one and maybe a floss tube anniversary one or whether it's going to be another case of I start things as and when I feel like it like 2023 was. Um, yeah, I, I, 2025 is, is ages away so I'll worry about it then but I do like to have things planned at the same time because some of these cross stitches take an awful lot of colours to collect um, and I don't like just rushing to get it to get it all together for a certain day that I want to start it so I like to think of things that I would like to start and then think of it through the year as do I really like this enough because you know these things take years to do um, and while I like the process of stitching more than anything else, I do also want to see some result at the end of that. You know, like I, I stitch because I like because I like to stitch, not because I like to see a finish. But there is a point where you want to see something like for all your hard work, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to be stitching too many giant cross stitches so what I'll do is I'll look at the images that I really like see how big they are compared to the ones that I'm already stitching and if I finish um so say if I finish Daft Daddy this year I won't be so worried about doing another large one because I've already got one out of rotation but if I don't finish something like Daft Daddy this year I will probably stick to smaller charts next year um so yeah I think I think I'll stick with that for now um, and I think that's all that I've got to tell you today. So I hope you have a really, really good week. And sorry there was no floss tube this week, but I will see you next Monday <clears throat> with um, quite a bit of progress, hopefully. My throat is now closing up. <laughs> so that's cue to go. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.